each one of us said, when one of us will survive, we need to tell. And I try. After Auschwitz is a new documentary that follows six extraordinary women, all of them Holocaust survivors. They tell their stories, as you see there, and how they went on to rebuild their lives here in America. John Keane is the director of the documentary, and he is here to talk to us about it. Uh, welcome, John. This took you quite a bit of time to put together and think about it. Tell us about this. Well, this is about 15 years of thinking and about four years of actual work, because like I, I say, it's, it's 420 years of life Mm -hmm. in an 80 minute film. Right. So how do you pack all that into something that tells six stories and then one full story? And was time of the essence? Because as we know, a lot of these survivors are, are dying off. There are not many left and you want to get to right. them. Well, here's the thing. I, I, I did initial interviews in 2008 because mm -hmm. stories are timeless, people are not. Mm -hmm. Sadly, three of the ladies passed away in the coming years. So I, when I went back in 2014 to get serious and finish it, I could only talk to three of them. Mm -hmm. So when you watch the film, you'll see that three of them add a little more texture to it. And how important was it for these six women to tell you their stories? Well, look, this film came about of the simple idea that liberation was not a happy day. Mm -hmm. You know, we think, mm -hmm. oh, you're free, go home, things are going to be good now. They went home to nothing, they come to America, and nobody would ask them about what happened. You know, put it behind you, you're in America. How do you ever heal from something if you can't talk about it? Mm -hmm. So for 35 years, they were quiet. So now that we're talking about it, this film is about what happened after. It's about Los Angeles. It's about our community, our history of, of this area through the eyes of survivors. I was telling John uh, during the commercial break that living in South Florida, I covered a lot of stories where we spoke to Holocaust survivors. And at first, as a young reporter, I was a little worried about approaching them and asking them about such a sensitive time in their lives. I didn't want to rip open a Band-Aid. But once I did and they got talking, it was amazing what they wanted to share and the most important thing is they didn't want people to forget right they want to be connected and they say that in the film if you if, if you understand me i am connected if you don't i am alone and they just want to be part of this world i had the same thing i got to know them so well that our interviews got really intimate but when you, you meet somebody, I don't want to offend you, I don't want to make you feel bad, and that's exactly the wrong attitude. They want to talk. They come to the screenings and talk to people after for half an hour. Are you surprised how open they are about it? Not anymore. Not anymore, right? That, they, they spent 35 years being told not to talk or being told that what they did was wrong or being told they were a victim or being told this and that. They mm -hmm. want to share. And I was reading some of the women in your film felt that even though they came to America, they still never felt like home again. Can you explain what that means? Well, that was one of the themes of the film. It's like you come from one place and your life is ripped apart and then you end up at another place. Where do you belong? And we were talking before about, I'm from Philly. Mm -hmm. People ask me where I'm from, where's home? Philly. Mm -hmm. I haven't lived there in 30 years. Why is Philly home? So for these people, why was life before the war more important than life after the war? Mm -hmm. Where do they belong? Where do they fit in? Like, where are you home? You know, where do you mm -hmm. feel as if you were home? And did they tell you what was the, their guiding light in all this? What, what got them through some of these darker times? Even though, like you said, they were liberated, but still, I mean, how do you forget such a dark time? You know, I, I, Renee says it best, mm -hmm. and she said it in a Q&A. Somebody asked her, how do you keep going on? Life is so hard. How do you get up every day? And she looked at her and just said, you're alive. She said, you're alive. You, you have to just assume and hope that the next day will bring you what it is you're hoping for. It's like, you're alive. Mm -hmm. they, value every, they value waking up every day. Yeah. We take so much for granted. We, through their eyes, I'm, I'm telling you, being with these people, you, you, it's mm -hmm. a path to empathy. It's a path to understanding. And any time we can get more understanding, more communication, Absolutely. that is a good thing. And which is why it's so important for these stories to continue to surface. Right, because it's right. not just the Holocaust stories, it's about what happened next, and it's about home. It's about right here in L.A., the other home. Exactly. John, yeah. thank you so much. Uh, for um, more on this uh, story, Sandy, I'll send it back to you. All right. Thanks, guys. Come